Welcome back to Why in the Morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. Uh, it's Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me on all my socials. So in this particular session, we are diving into an interview that, that it's going to look at the rising trend of co-living spaces. So remember, you can follow us across all our social media handles at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me on all my social, all my social some social you've heard about co-working right so by now but there's a new concept in town about uh, co-living a trend that has been there uh, since way back and young people will actually embrace uh, it all over the world in all the cities so I am joined by two gentlemen from the Village World Limited so Isaac Kamau and Boniface Nyaluale. <laughs> I got that right. They are co-founders of the Village World uh, Limited. Thank you, gentlemen, for creating time to be with us today. Thank you so Thank much for inviting us. I appreciate it. So starting off uh, with this conversation about co-living, we understand that uh, co-working has been there for a, while, for a while and also co-living, but it has not been much embraced and uh, considering to the, this 21st century where young people are embracing it, especially professionals and they're looking forward to being spaces where they are closer to their work and everything else. So Bonfils would like to find out, uh, even before we dive into the question that I have is that, is it an ideal way to continue one's profession and personal growth outside of the office? That is the co-living space if you dive into it. Yeah, I mean, um, as you said earlier, um, this is not a new concept per se because uh, it comes from like the aspect of sharing and I think um, for like generations people have been sharing spaces. Um, I know with the rise of millennials thing might be changing or perspective might be changing but even in our families we've always shared spaces in schools we've always shared spaces and then of course it came um, into an aspect of sharing spaces when we were working um, just to use those spaces more efficiently and more effectively and to save on cost that is uh, when we're talking about offices. So also as village, uh, we looked at how do we help young people, one, cut down on cost, but also make living more efficient. Um, I introduce communities to just make also living more fun. I mean, at <laughs> the end of the day, you can be leaving your workplace and then coming home and it's almost the same environment. You need a change of environment. So that's one of the main reasons why we had introduced this. But we also felt like people needed to continue um, a professional growth outside of the workplace. And so that's why the community aspect is in this. So you meet young people who are sharing the same spaces, uh, probably in the same uh, profession or different profession, mm -hmm. and just gives you an opportunity to interact with them, understand how the world operates out there. Remember, you always at work probably uh, eight hours you don't have time to interact so this is the time you actually interact with them and just get uh, you know uh, new perspectives and just understand like the dynamics around um, the profession where you're working and if you're feeling like you need to also change a space at least now you understand uh, which kind of steps you need to take you know who to actually talk to to just understand how the space works mm -hmm. so yeah this was a continuation of personal growth outside of the workplace. All right, and we'll just get a better in-look uh, throughout this conversation about co-living, but uh, I'd like to go back to you, Isaac. You are also co-founder of the Village World, and uh, I'd like to find out, for someone who's watching uh, this conversation and they're wondering, what is co-living? Maybe uh, they have been co-living, but they don't actually know that it is co-living, yeah. Yeah, um, co-living is basically sharing spaces with someone else someone you might know or someone you literally don't know <laughs> <laughs> and for us um at the village we are focusing on how do we bring people who don't know each other to live with each other and coexist and grow each other all yeah. right you'll agree with me that people are from uh, they come from different backgrounds they have different personalities so how do you gauge uh the suitable people to just uh, live within the same space yeah so Basically, for us, we've been able to develop a criteria, and uh, using tech, we are able to leverage on uh, matching people. So they are able to see the preferences of the other roommates, and they can be able to select whether they want to live with them or not. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, back to you, Boomface. And uh, co living has been there uh, since way back, and it has now been, uh, you know, embraced by young people quite too much, especially in the professional uh, uh, industry sector. Uh, I would like to find out how did you just uh, find out about this business and how did you get into it? Uh, well, um, uh, you know, Village was founded in a really funny way. Um, so um, we were in the same program, of course, Young African Leadership Initiative uh, with Isaac. Uh, we also have another colleague called Christine. Uh, but um, when we put this together, all of us were living like in different locations. I mean, for me, I was uh, in Kakamega, uh, but I remember the same week uh, I traveled actually to Mombasa for a training, and then Isaac reached out and put together a team, and then he was like, so we have this housing idea. I was mm -hmm. already working on a project for housing. He mm -hmm. was already working on a project for housing, and we felt like leveraging on you know those uh, our potential we could build something new. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I just remember one of our colleagues, I met uh, her in an elevator. And I didn't even know like it's her. I just knew the name, <laughs> but I didn't. I went to pick mm -hmm. her and then I came up and I didn't know her. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, where we started feeling like actually this could work with strangers. Yeah, because I remember we went, we pitched in the same day in a competition and we won and we were like, we don't know each other. We haven't even interacted with each other uh, uh, before that, uh, but we could just get together because we understood like each other. Yeah, so I think um, this is how it came to be, but also we just looked at what are some of the other challenges that young people are experiencing out there when it comes to housing? I mean, you've heard of, of um, affordable housing under uh, the Big Four agenda. You've uh, heard of deficit of affordable housing. But then there's also availability of spaces that a lot of people and a lot of Kenyans can't afford. Okay. So then we asked ourselves, how do we address the needs in the market without having to like, you know, look at really huge investments that we couldn't get. So we thought we could use the empty spaces to actually get young people as spaces that they can afford. And the best way to cut down on cost was to cost share. Yeah, so that's how generally we settled on this and we said, I think this is the best way that we could actually move forward. Yeah, and it's what we've been doing since then. And pretty much if you look at what a young person pays when they live here, uh, in a co-living space uh, as compared to if they lived either in a normal apartment or even if they lived out of, for example, if we have an apartment in Westlands, what they are paying there, uh, relatively, it's, it's, it's a chunk, right? But if you compare to expenditures like transport, going to work in Westlands, if you compare uh, the time, the productive time that they are actually wasting, you know, commuting, and then if you look at the aspects like um, people have to, like, concentrate on work and then there's the frustration of having to go home the music on the, the vehicles you know the there's thus so much frustration mm -hmm. that if you compare to what you are actually charging they're getting so much value for their money mm -hmm. at the end of the day and that's what you've realized we need to actually build on give okay. young people more decent living spaces um, give them an opportunity to save on cost and also give them an opportunity to just interact with people outside of work. So this stress question, burnout issues can actually be addressed in a very simple manner by just providing an affordable co-living space close to their workplaces. All right. And uh, back to you, Isaac, I'd like to find out in terms of uh, the village well limited, how did you guys start? With what, what were the, the tools, how, what, how did you even capital, where did you start, how? Um, so we are lucky to have uh, gotten to an opportunity to go through a hackathon uh, two years ago, back in 2018, mm -hmm. where it was a shelter tech hackathon. And uh, through that, we got an opportunity to get into shelter tech accelerator, where we actually got some funding uh, that came in and we were able to uh, grow our business and our team and we are able to facilitate ourselves in terms of uh, going to the market, discovering new opportunities in the market, uh, actually doing the surveys uh, from the people we are targeting, the young people, and uh, it has been a great journey so far. And um, in terms of uh, also fundraising, 
we we always looking for opportunity to get more money from investors so uh that's where our money comes from basically Investing. but you're also looking at uh, how do we also get some chipping into the business when we don't have uh, um money from investors so we also do contribute some money yeah. internally so mm -hmm. we're able to move the company forward An important thing that you mentioned is about hackatech i feel like the whole business originated from there what is hackatech and what do they deal with so and what role do they play in this <laughs> <laughs> so basically a hackathon is a uh, a place where you meet as group of people mm -hmm. you work on different ideas to solve a specific problem so for example uh, back then we were given like uh, a couple of challenges there were three main challenges and we picked one of them we were like five team working on the same challenge so after having uh, worked on uh, the, the challenge as a team uh, from the village we have key strengths from everybody within our team so we were able to form a team that was very uh, creative in terms of ideas a team that demonstrated a lot of uh, enthusiastic and uh, a lot of uh, commitment towards solving an idea and towards bringing it to the market so uh, basically hackathon enable young people be able to work on new ideas that are either existing or they are not working very well in the market right. and are able to bring some efficiency into the market by working on a specific solution all right yeah. and one face i would like to find out how long have you guys been into business and uh, so far how is the journey uh, i mean since 2018 mm -hmm. um that was november Yes. Uh, if I'm right, yeah, so that was November uh, 2018 uh, till now. So that's um, the time we've taken. And um, I mean, one thing about our uh, entrepreneurship journey is that it, it comes with a lot of learning opportunities because um, a lot of issues come up. And one thing that uh, for us at village you understand also as a team is that the challenges are actually like opportunities uh, they give you a different perspective like you're supposed to look at this issue you're addressing a different way otherwise that pro problem wouldn't exist yeah so i think for us it has been a learning journey um we keep on building each other not just the business itself because at the end of the day um what we usually say with isaac is the business and the solution is as good as the team itself mm -hmm. yeah so i think for me um it's been an a, an experience i mean um before i got into this I was already doing like uh, businesses and small, uh, I was in small businesses by then. And one thing about those was that a lot of it was average. I mean, it's just about you, you have a product, you get a client. But the startup space for as long as I've been uh, uh, at Village is a bit different. It's about waking up every morning and asking yourself, what's the problem today? Know what was the problem when we came up with this, yeah? So if today we're like, we were supposed to address a housing problem, and then we realize that these young people, on top of the housing problem, they have maybe, let's say, uh, uh, an issue about stress management, then the question would be, how do we still like bank on this solution to make sure that we are able to address this other solution? So it's about every day waking up and asking yourself, how better can we do it yeah how efficient can we operate mm. how can we make life easier for our clients mm -hmm. and, and 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 these young people and these tenants so that has been the journey since 2018 today and pretty much there's a huge difference um if someone who met us probably in 2018 <laughs> is gonna tell us mm, this is not probably what you said in 2018 yeah that's that has been changed. So sti still on uh, on to you, I understand that you are you're in the department of marketing when Village is concerned. Then I believe this question uh, suits you best. Uh, how do you guys market the business out here? Okay, uh, so well, uh, this this is one um, of I think the toughest moments probably in any business. Um, Isaac usually 
insist that mm -hmm. yes I, you have money for the business but the business doesn't rely on actually how much money you have but your ability to bring more money and get clients because mm -hmm. that's also how you realize the impact so um we have a segment that's the young people right so we asked ourselves where do we get the young people so mostly we market through facebook platforms uh, but also the other thing is since we're living pretty much in africa and, and and here in kenya we're probably the first people to implement it we need to also help people change perspective Okay, because a lot of people will say, mm, but I don't want to share. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, someone is like, but I've shared enough, so I just want my own space. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, look, I was looking forward to just getting a job and just getting my own space. And I'm like, okay, as marketing, now I need to like give you a solution mm -hmm. that will make you overlook all those issues mm -hmm. and just settle into this space mm -hmm. okay so of course facebook as a platform but also facebook might not be as much effective mm -hmm. so we also use like just um different uh, models of campaign uh, talking to young people uh, platform like this i mean um a lot of people probably have not also heard what co-living is all about uh, we go out there and someone says so what's co-living and the first thing i tell them do you know what co-working is because it's much easier for me to explain from something you already know <laughs> Absolutely. yeah yeah uh, but yeah those are mainly our our models of of marketing but of late we've had like different people reach out to us um, especially a lot of uh, corporates, travel agencies, uh, just asking us, okay, you guys are providing co-living. Maybe it's something we really want to hear about. So we also have that platform on the side of uh, B2B, so business to business kind of, yeah. All right, yeah. Ah, that's interesting. And <coughs> back to you, Isaac, and for someone who is watching this conversation and they are wondering, yeah, why should I consider co-living? Uh, and then the next question will be, is there privacy? Will I, have, will I have my privacy in this? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, co-living, you're looking at how do you save costs um, from what you are spending at the moment to bring in them down to something you can always consistently afford over time and in a location that um, you really want. Because sometimes you will be forced to live far away from the city and uh, this is because you cannot afford a place, for example, in um, up market, mm -hmm. um, for example, Westlands Kilimani area. So looking at that cost effectiveness is one of the key factors that most people who come to us are asking, uh, can I get a house or a room of this budget? And then we tell them we have different options. So uh, you review them. And if you like it, you pay and move in. Then the other thing, of course, uh, that comes with co-living is the aspect of uh, joining a community. Um, you're able to network with people. You're able to live with other people. But within the living of, uh, of uh, this community, you're sharing an apartment or a house. So how do you share an apartment or a house amicably with other people you don't know? Mm -hmm. So for us, we have two options where you can either access a, a room that is fully uh, and suit with the bathroom mm -hmm. where you, you have total privacy. And the only thing that you do is actually share the living room and the, and the, and the kitchen as well as the, the laundry area. Mm -hmm. um, if the room is not and suit, then there is a common bathroom within the apartment or the house. These, um, the best way we actually solve this idea of uh, how do you maintain privacy and cleanliness is actually providing weekly cleaning services to these apartments so you don't have to complain who is supposed to yeah, wash I the house. Yeah, I think that's an issue. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then you don't have to ask who never washed the dishes. Mm. So if Or the, the toilet paper. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so with this kind of services, you're able to have an amicable coexistence with other people because all the major barriers towards co-living have been eliminated and then we come in as a company to manage it professionally mm. which is something that is not existing in the market and basically all over africa it's maybe south africa that has co-living spaces at, at, at the moment but i will say that uh, 